Morning, Todd and Jess. While we're here in the studio, all the action is happening off the coast. 27 miles. Those turbines are hard at work. To tell you about these turbines, I got on a boat and I went to see them. Our waters are home to a lot. Fish, dolphins, boaters, and now this. It's pretty fascinating when you look at these two turbines. Even more fascinating when you consider that they're 27 miles offshore in the middle of the ocean. To give you the full scope, we took a trip to see them. But these modern marvels didn't happen overnight. And I see over a decade of work. Uh, to get to the point where we install these two turbines. John Larson is Dominion Energy's Director of Public Policy and Economic Development. He says these two turbines were the first to be installed in federal waters. Their success is helping make way for 176 more. To give you some perspective on how massive these turbines are, when the blade is fully extended, it is taller than the Washington Monument, and these aren't even the biggest ones yet. The new ones are going to be almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower. The project, currently under development, will cover 176 square miles or two and a half Washington DCs. To give that more context, the turbines will generate enough clean energy, they say, to power 660,000 homes. Seeing renewable energy make that step from just being on the drawing board to actually being out here and generating energy. That's just a, a tremendous step forward. Not just for offshore wind, but for jobs and the economy. Larson says during construction, about 900 jobs will be added. Electricians, machinists, hydraulics, welders, people that do painting and coating. And in 2026, when the turbines are built and in maintenance mode, there will be 1,100 jobs and $210 million added to the economy. From money to marine life. We have done numerous environmental studies. We've mapped the seafloor. We've taken core samples of the, of the locations. Jerry Barnes, marine affairs manager, says the turbines have been positive for what's below the water. We're seeing flounder, mahi-mahi, black sea bass, starfish, amberjack, all these fish that are, that are you know, attracted to the structure and it's going to be a real boom for the recreational fishermen. A boom that Barnes says will be felt across the state as Virginia paves the way for clean renewable energy. This is pretty phenomenal having the first two turbines that have gone through the federal process. We still learn from them every day. Yeah, they say they do still learn from them every day. Let me tell you, it was quite the experience to get out there and see those things that close. It's 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 really cool. It's exciting to see. Yeah, yeah. something new. So let's ask you this question, Aaron. Has there been any pushback on this project? Yeah, I mean, with a project of this size, I, I feel like it's safe to say that there's always going to be a bit of pushback. I mean, it's a budget of $9.8 billion. So this project is still under development at the moment, at least for the next phase. So that means state regulators and agencies still need to do some signing off. Just recently, Recently, the Attorney General's office told state regulators that Dominion has overstated the economic benefits of the wind farm, warning of significant risks to customers. Hearings in the case are scheduled for May and public comment is opened. So we laid a lot of information out for you here. I know it's a lot to digest. We have it all broken down for you in a digestible way on WTKR.com. I'm Erin Miller, News 3.